Hi Daniel, uh, you are co-founder for uh, Realities, who is a company working about a virtual reality project and um, you're working since uh, five years as a researcher studying human navigation behavior. Uh, what are your main v VR projects and uh, what about your realities company? So um, I started yeah, over five years ago um, doing research in virtual reality. Um, we better say using virtual reality, um, doing basic psychological research um, and it was in a time where VR was not that big. Um, it was more like kind of a thing in a lab um, that you would do uh, because it gives you, gives you opportunities to manipulate um, the surrounding um, during an experiment in a way that is not possible in reality. <laughs> It was, you know, super cumbersome, super expensive. But then VR, the second wave of VR, or like the, the VR renaissance came along um, with Oculus, with Oculus Rift Kickstarter. And um, yeah, I, I kind of like got sidetracked into the industry, left uh, academia, and uh, then was working on, on other projects, um, like the Audi VR showroom experience, um, or uh, other, other things, finding out really um, how do you do that stuff. Have you seen a development in a virtual reality and to what extent? So the development that we've seen over the last years in VR has, has been just tremendous and uh, crazy. We, we started with, with like, you know, things like a dude in, in, his, in his garage taped together with duct tape. Um, based on some mobile screen. I think the current current state of the technology is comparable to, to back in the 80s when you know cell phones were those huge big clunky things that some weirdos would carry around to either show off or because they had like some super important job that would justify having those but it was something that was completely impractical for most people and it's the same for VR right now. Give it a few years and I think we'll have a very very different kind of VR. We go to real world places um, and we scan them completely photorealistically um, and bring them into VR so that you as a user can, can go to those places and explore them um, even if you could not go there otherwise. One of our last projects that we published was the Cologne Cathedral which you know sounds like a place you could go and experience especially here in Germany um, but we scanned especially the parts that are not accessible for the normal visitors. So the areas around the altar are like special places in the towers of the cathedral that you don't even go with the guided tools to. Tell us something about the house project uh, which was made in uh, Berlin. Yeah, exactly. So the house um, was this insane art installation that happened last summer here in Berlin. Um, and yeah, there, there was a crazy dynamic. Um, the Dixons, the curators got handed over this, this house that was scheduled to be to be demolished um, near near KDV and, and Bahnhof Zoo. Um, and it was an old banking building, five stories, over a hundred rooms. Um, and they just jumped in there, started painting and, and got more and more people, more and more artists involved that they knew and they flocked there and, and they just started painting in there for three months and ended up painting everything in there. Like it, everything was turned into like one ginormous artwork, um, like 165 street arts, uh, street artists from, from, from you know, all over the globe contributed and um, turned this thing into this, into this really insane place. Um, and then it was open for about uh, two months, in which it directed 80,000 visitors and then it was scheduled for demolition because that was the plan from the get-go, right? Um, and towards the end of the project, um, we got introduced to the guys and uh, we sat down and talked a bit and um, had to drink a couple of Jägermeisters because that's how the Dixons 
do their business. Um, and then we agreed um, that it would be fucking amazing to scan this place and to preserve it um, for the time after being knocked down. And, and yeah, yeah, during during uh, uh, like super hardcore two weeks uh, scanning every night, um, we literally scanned the entire place and now we are turning that into, into an experience. Also featuring over um, 60 interviews that we shot of artists as holograms in the place. So that enable you to kind of travel back in time and experience the place. Do you think that uh, VR can become a mainstream tool and uh, how? I think definitely. Um, VRB will become something mainstream, maybe not in its form that it's in now, um, because as I said, like it's, it's really early days. This idea of going into a world that was, you know, something else out of your reach, something where you could not go to otherwise, and, and, and you know, not you, not only like in certain intents of, of travel as we do for realities, but in, to completely impossible worlds, um, is something that is very deeply rooted in, in human nature and that we wanted to do for, for ages and ages. This idea of, of VR is, is older than, than the first, you know, actual technical implementations. And seeing that, this urge surfacing over time again and again and again, um, and the possibility that VR has to fulfill this need and to pro provide those experiences uh, makes me very certain that um, it will become something mainstream over, over uh, like in the long run. I think the whole, whole idea of, of sectors will be broken up in, in, in some way or another. Um, will become a lot more integrated, but I mean, yeah, there's, there's obvious things like entertainment is first, that's where we see VR now, um, gaming um, and, and other forms of entertainment, um, things like, yeah, obvious, obviously travel um, or so on, will have, a, will have that impact, or well, VR will have that impact early on, um, but then, yeah, productivity, um, telecommunication there, VR will not, you know, do that alone, but, but in like a, a mixture with, with augmented reality and mixed reality, um, where we'll just see us a lot more fluently interacting with, with any kind of digital content. So the basic question is like, which, which sector does not benefit from, from having a more natural interaction with digital content? And that's, I think, very few left that, that would not benefit from that. It's just a matter of time, like, who, who will you know, um, embrace it earlier on or later on.